everyone, and welcome to another Sega Creator Focus. We're joined by content creators who are also Sega fans. I'm Marta, and today I'm joined by Twitch streamer, YouTube content creator, and self-proclaimed mega fan of Sega, George, aka G to the next level. How are you doing? I'm doing great, Marta. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. Thank you so much for joining us. We really, really appreciate it. So for, for those that may not be familiar with you and, and your work, do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do? Sure. Uh, well, um, I go by you know, G to the next level. I've been doing YouTube for about five years now. And I only just now started doing Twitch for about a year. Uh, basically, my, I, my motto is all about retro gaming in the modern age, but with a little tiny bit of Sega flair. Because as <laughs> I normally always say is that although my, my retro gaming journey didn't really start with Sega, I always say this, it always comes back to Sega. Like at the end of the day, it always really comes back to it. And I basically have been chronicling like essentially my retro gaming journey since 1991, to really be honest with it. That's the day that I got my Sega Genesis. That's really where everything really got started, Christmas 1991. And uh, when I decided to start doing YouTube, I was like, well, what can I do to kind of make things different? And I realized there's not really a whole lot of people talking about Sega. And Sega is kind of my, it's kind of my biggest focus, like really anything. Like you can see, like I'm a gigantic fan of the Sega Genesis. <laughs> I've been collecting for the Sega Genesis for pff, Lord knows how many how many years. I have a, a near complete U.S. collection. The only thing I'm not I'm missing are the uh, the non retail release stuff like Outback Joy and a few other things. But everything has been retail release. I have a complete collection on, and then not only that, it's been a wonderful journey. And then now just being able to really go whole into it. Now not only that, like I'm writing a book about the Sega Genesis. I've been doing more streaming, just getting a lot more involved with the community because the retro community is such a loving community, and I'm thrilled and honored to be a part of it. Absolutely. And um, what what is it that you love about Sega and what has made you become a fan? Because you are a huge Sega fan, clearly. Oh, yeah. I think mainly the biggest thing about Sega, and this, again, goes all the way back to more or less the beginning, because even though I didn't start with Sega, I was kind of exposed to Sega with some of my family members. Like, a few of my family members had a Master System. Remember, the, the very first Master System game I ever played was Double Dragon. And I was mm -hmm. like, well, this is different, because I was always so enthused with, like, with you know, the other video game companies at that particular time. But then there was really just one game that kind of really changed it all for me because I was familiar with Sega, but if I wasn't familiar with Sega, I was going to be familiar with Sega. And it all comes down to, once again, this guy right here, like the oh, Sonic yeah. the Hedgehog. <laughs> this was the one that really made me become a fan of it. And ever since then, I noticed that one thing I've always loved about Sega is that they give the people what they want, but they always want to do things a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. They're all about blazing their own path, blazing their own trail, making an identity for themselves. What are you going to do to be different amongst everybody else? That's always stuck with me. That's always stuck with me. It's always been kind of the allure, whether it be the Genesis, the Saturn, the Dreamcast, the Game Gear, whatever it was. Every single one of those was just different and it was unique to me. And I think that's one of the biggest allures about them, why I've, I've stuck with them for all these years. Even even today, I'm still really huge into what Sega's been putting out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and your passion definitely, definitely shows. Um, and this next question might be a little bit of a difficult one, but what is your favorite Sega game of all time? Oh, favorite <laughs> Sega game of all time. I mean- It's a tough one. It is a tough one, but I think at the end of the day, where are you at? There you are. I think at the end of the day, I know I just said Sonic, right? But I think it's got to be Streets of Rage 2. It has to be Streets of Rage 2 because to me, it's like, this is the game that I feel like, you ever get a moment when you have so many games to play and you're just like, I have no idea what to play, but I need something to really give me like a good pick me up, something I can pick up and play. And I know that I'll never get tired of it. That's me in Streets of Rage 2. I can't tell you how many times I've played through that game and I've loved it and I've never been tired of it ever since the game first came out. I remember I got that game when it first came out, so I loved the first one. I got that one, I got Rage 3, I just got Streets of Rage 4 when it came out. And it's like, I'm, I'm thrilled that the series is still going on to this day. But Streets of Rage 2, to me, it's like it's one of the closest things I can think of to a perfect game. Like to me, mm. like I, I absolutely love it dearly. And so much that I've got it on basically everything you could possibly get Streets of Rage 2 on. The only thing I'm missing for it is the Master System. Like, that's it. Other than that, um, yeah, Streets of Rage 2, I'd probably say, is my my favorite Sega game of all time. Very, very close second is Sonic 2. Very close second. It's a difficult choice. It's a difficult choice, but a great choice nonetheless. <laughs> <laughs> and um, looking at the collection that you have behind yourself, that is a massive collection. I know that you're a massive Sega collector. 
Um, what is your most prized Sega uh, collector's item that you have? Whether it's a game or an item, what would be what would be the one that you go? That's the one. And hmm. Well, I would probably think. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go with this because if I had to pick one, it's right up here. Let me grab it. So, I mean, that doesn't purely have to be Sega. I mean, it's close enough, really, I would think, right? Would be Mega Man The Wily Wars. It's like, I think I'd probably be close enough to that. If not something that's like particularly Sega, because if you notice here, it's also signed by KG and Fune. And it's mm. like, I got a chance to meet him. And it's like, this is wonderful, you know? But if not that, I probably think when it, when it comes to one item that I love dearly, and I've talked about this on my channel too, it's probably this guy right here. Oh it's like, yeah. <laughs> this 1992 Cow Toy Sonic the Hedgehog plush. This th this guy has stuck with me my entire time because uh, for those who don't know, uh, when the Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog was airing here locally in the United States, uh, there was a contest that was going on. And if you watched the Sonic cartoon every single day for five days, you answered a question, you mailed your question into your local TV station, you could win a prize pack. And that prize pack came with like temporary tattoos, a balloon, a few other things, and this plush, like this Cow Toys plush. And they say he's been with me ever since. And I, I know it's, it's just a plush, right? But it's those particular memories of watching watching the Sonic cartoon with my family and you know, us, you know, spending that time together and watching it. And just he's stuck with me ever since. And I'd say it's probably my my most prized piece out of any of all my Sega collections, I'd say. And that that is amazing. I'm I I, I wish I wish I hadn't. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, you you speak with so much passion about about Sega and how we found you, of course, as being a content creator. How long have you been the content creator for? So I've been on YouTube for about five years. I first started off as a co-host on another YouTube channel called I Retro Gamer. Uh, my buddy Tyler, he took me under his wing. He's like, hey, because I was basically before I got started, I was like, I don't know where to begin. I was kind of spinning my wheels, but I want to do something and I want to do something that's well, it might not be 100% about Sega, but with a little tiny bit of flair to really stick out because that's my main love when it comes to retro gaming. And he's like, hey, come on to the channel. We'll just talk brief, like no scripts, no anything like that. We'll just talk. And sure enough, I was there for about a year before I decided to make my own channel and G to the next level. And then it's it's been awesome ever since. So yeah, I've been at YouTube for about uh, five years total. I just started at Twitch roughly about in February, so about six months now, mm -hmm. and I've been streaming on Twitch. And yeah, it's it's been a roller coaster ride ever since. Like I said, the community has been so heartwarming and amazing. Just basically the feedback that I've been getting from everything that I've been put out has been wonderful. And I love doing it. You've been doing a great job. And um oh, and, and on and on that uh, on that note, uh, many people are now looking to become content creators. What would be your main point of advice when it when it comes down to, 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 to people that want to dabble into content creation, but maybe are just a little bit scared to do so? Uh, probably the best advice I can think of because I had to do the same thing myself. Uh, don't sweat the small stuff and just do it. I mean, I'm not <laughs> going to say that you have to do it immediately. It's like, mm. take your time. But at some point, it's like, once you figure out what you want to do, like, who are you and what is your main passion? Once you figure that out, you center it around that and then make your content surround around that because you need to have the personality and the passion first. And I know that nearly everybody that has those thoughts has it. It's just a yeah. matter of finding it and then unleashing it to the world. And the only way that you could really do that is by doing it. Don't yeah. sweat the small stuff. Like, don't sweat, like, how good your camera is, how good your capture is. Like, is it, don't sweat <laughs> any of that. That stuff will come. Equipment will come. Yeah, but your your personality and what you bring to, uh, to whether it be YouTube, Twitch, writing, anything like that, that's what's really going to bring people in to see you. 100% couldn't couldn't agree more personality is key people are going to come are going to come for you at the end of the day and you have a wonderful personality you have vibrant content so thank you so so much for joining us and talking to us about your love for Sega we really appreciate it <laughs> well, thank you thank you all for inviting me it's been an honor that has been G to the next level. Absolutely wonderful content creator. Make sure you check out his links will be in the description down below if you want to see more of him. As for us, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, do make sure to like and subscribe. Tickle that notification bell so you never miss out on any future Sega videos. But until then, take good care of yourselves and we'll see you all very soon. Bye-bye.